thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is Johanna Sinkvist. I'm a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg here in Gothenburg. And I will not read the long title again, <laughs> but you. it's about the interactions between the cholinergic and the purinergic transmitter system in vivo. So I will begin with some short introduction. Um, the purinergic transmitter system plays a vital role in blood signaling and may be involved at various levels of the micturition reflex arc. For instance, ATP may directly stimulate the detrusive smooth muscle itself, or it may act as a modulator on the urothelium, or it may affect afferent and efferent nerve endings. These effects may be altered by interactions with other transmitter systems. Evidence for such an interaction with the cholinergic transmitter system have previously been presented. In functional studies, it has been shown that ATP-induced smooth muscle contractions are significantly reduced in the presence of the muscarinic antagonist atropine, in vitro. So, the purpose of this study was to further examine the link between those two transmitter systems in vivo, where aside from the urothelium, also the involvement of the pelvic innovation in this interaction can be examined in an intact system. The method that we have chosen for this study is in vivo systometry in anesthetized rats. So here we have some preliminary results. The graph shows change in intravesical pressure on the y-axis and intravenous concentration of ATP on the x-axis. Graph A shows intact bladder controls, while graph B shows urothelial denuded bladders, that is, bladders treated with collagenase. And as you can see, the ATP-induced response, which is the squared line up there, was significantly reduced after removal of the pelvic innovation, the middle line, and it was further significantly reduced in the presence of atropine. If you look at graph B, you see that neither of these effects are present after urothelial denudation. So what does this mean? Well, it appears so to exist an some kind of ATP-induced release of acetylcholine in vivo, supporting the pure perinergic response. The release appears to be of larger urothelial origin, but the pelvic innovation does also seem to be involved in this interaction. And this may be an important mechanism for micturition, and its effect on other levels of the micturition reflex arc might be of great interest for further studies. For instance, we are currently investigating the effects of ATP and the ATP-induced release of acetylcholine on the afferent signaling in our in situ Hals bladder model. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Ibu Versi, very nice presentation. Um, when you say uh, interfering with the innovation of collagenase, what, what are you exactly talking about? What are you doing? Sorry. What? So you mentioned that with uh, you that innovation of the pelvic floor is important as well, but I wasn't quite sure how you linked that with your experimental design. Ah, okay. No. So if you see, I will go here uh, in the graph here in uh, both in the contrast and in the denuded bodies, we have first added ATP alone, and then we cut the pelvic nerve. I see. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have a question. Um, how do you think that these observations are valid for the human blood? Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. And of course, there's uh, some differences. For example, in the human bladder, ATP is more important in the, during inflammation. And what I think is that perhaps the results that we see here in our controls might be important during inflammation in the human bladder. Yeah, well, you, I think you're right in that, but, but <laughs> you know, in rat, 60% of the electrically induced contraction is ATP mediated, and it's between 5 and 10% in the human blood. So uh, the proportion between these two things uh, are, well, uh, if it, it, this has any importance in vivo, uh, and if you try to, to, to well, uh, try to estimate how important it is for the human situation, I think you have to reduce its physiological value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, everything is changed 
when you introduce inflammation, because then it's, if you take the isolated bladder strip, 50% is ATP. So, so in pathological situation, I mean, this could be relevant also for the human bladder. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Please. Can, Can you please come to the microphone? Wonder you give in vivo injection of ATP. So what's the concentration we reach to the bladder, especially to your urethra? How they function? You know which receptor you think may be mediated for the ATP action? Yeah, that's an interesting question as well. Uh, of course, we haven't uh, looked in, we have done some in vitro studies on this as well, actually, where we are trying to identify uh, which receptors uh, that is responsible for this ATP induced release of acetylcholine that we are uh, observing here. Um, it is not published yet and it's preliminary, but uh, we have actually used alpha beta methylene ATP in vitro, and there we have also observed a significant reduction, suggesting that DP2X1 and or X3 receptor at least is involved, but we also believe that other receptors are involved as well. Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you.